Hey, what is up guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a concept, AMD Fine Wine Technologies. If you want to understand more specifics on this topic, I will leave a link to my good friend OzTalks Hardware's video over the topic down below in the description. But in short, it's a theory that AMD GPUs with driver updates close the gap if not past their competition over time, hence the concept of fine wine. They age very well. So I decided to take this concept and do a few tests around it. I have the XFX R9 390 in my personal rig, a GPU that has received many driver updates over the time I've owned it. Its competitor at the time of release was a GTX 970, which from recent benchmarks, it passes in most tests compared to launch day, thanks to driver optimization of course, hence the fine wine technologies. The same can be said about how Nvidia somewhat gimps their cards with driver updates, but that's pretty much not the focus of this video, that's something I will save for a later video in the future. But what we're going to be doing is testing my R9 390 versus a GTX 980 to see how well with driver optimization does the R9 390 get close to being on par with a card that was at a whole nother level on release. The 980 numbers will be provided by a YouTuber named Savage Tech. He's a pretty awesome guy and you all should check out his link in the description down below. The suite of benchmarks that we're going to be using are as follows, Doom in OpenGL mode and Vulkan, GTA 5, 3D Mark Firestrike, and Time Spy. The test bench that I will be using features an i7-5820K at 4.2GHz, 16GB of DDR4 RAM, and an R9-390 at its stock's clocks of 10-15MHz. All tests are ran at 1080p, and I am running the latest AMD driver version 16-12-2 Crimson Relive drivers. So let's get into the numbers. First up, Doom. At max ultra settings on OpenGL mode, we get a minimum FPS of 56, a max of 138, and an average of 81. Now when we switch it up to Vulkan, we get a minimum of 75, a max of 142, and an average of 101. Those are very solid numbers for 1080p. It really does give you headroom for higher resolution gaming. Next up is GTA 5 with the Ultra Preset. We get a minimum of 56 and max of 132 and an average of 78. This is using the built-in benchmark utility in GTA 5, just to note. Lastly, we have 3D Mark. First, with Firestrike, we get a system score overall of 11,182 and a GPU score of 12,503. In Time Spy, we get a system score of 4,080 and a graphics score of 3,838. So now that we have the baseline numbers from the red team, let's send it over to Savage Tech so he can give you the GTX 980 numbers and we can see how well they compare. Hey guys, it's Savage Tech. Shout out to Matt, kudos to him for letting me on his amazing channel. Now, my system consists of a GTX 980, a 6700K at 4GHz, and 16GB of DDR4. Now, with GTA 5, at 1080p, very high settings, with FXA on, we got a high of 168 and a low of 108. Not bad. Now, in 3D Mark Firestrike, our total score is 11,211, and our GPU score is 13,718. In 3D Mark Time Spy, the DX12 benchmark, I got 4,192 total and 4,097 on the GPU score. Now Doom at 1080p at ultra settings with Vulkan enabled, we got a high of 153 FPS and a low of 93. Now Doom at 1080p ultra settings in OpenGL, we got a high of 144 FPS and a low of 88 FPS. Now that was my benchmarks and for the second time I want to thank Matt for letting me on his wonderful awesome channel and I recommend you subscribe to him and to Savage Tech as well. So what can we take away from these numbers? In games like GTA 5 and Doom, there really is a clear gap. You can really tell that the 980 is a superior card, but one thing that really stands out to me is the synthetic tests. I am not one to take these tests as the end all of end all for results, but the numbers are super close with the Firestrike benchmark having the R9 390 system only falling behind the GTX 980 system by only 29 points, which is a very small gap. 
the times by numbers are very similar, with a give or take 50 point difference. This isn't the case in just overall category, it is apparent in GPU scores as well, with the 980 only having a slight edge over the R9 390. So really what do these numbers mean? In no way I could say that the R9 390 is equal in performance to the 980. That is just not the case. But the thing is that's very interesting here is that the 390 is closer to the 980 than it was on launch day, giving the edge to AMD in driver optimization and tuning their older cards. Take everything I said here with a grain of salt, there could be some variances in benchmarking in that we don't have a perfect benchmarking test set up, but it does give you some interesting info to take home and think about. That pretty much wraps it up here guys, I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions or rebuttals, feel free to comment them down below. I will gladly get in a discussion with you. Be sure to subscribe to Savage Tech as well, his link will be in the description down below. Special thanks to him once again, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace out guys.